Hello and welcome back to the English Grammar Mastery course. My name is Sai Sarath and in this lesson you are going to learn all about nouns and different types of nouns. You will also be learning how to identify the nouns and how to use them correctly without making any grammatical mistakes. Before we start just remember that if you have any questions at all you can ask me those in the Q&A section or email me and I will get back to you personally as soon as possible. So without any delay, let us begin our lesson. Let's start with the basics and understand what nouns are. A noun is a part of speech that names a person, place, animal, thing or an emotion. Basically, anything that names something is a noun. Whether you are talking about Raghu, who is a person, Chennai, which is a place, Cow, which is an animal, Pencil, which is a thing, or Joy, which is an emotion. Nouns form a large proportion of English vocabulary and they come in wide variety of types. In the first type of classification, nouns can be divided into concrete nouns and abstract nouns. A concrete noun is something that can be perceived through the five senses. If you can see, hear, touch, taste or smell something, it uses a concrete noun. For example, in the sentence, the book is on the table, the words book and table can be perceived through our five senses. That means we can touch a book and table, we can see them, hear them and also feel them. So the words book and table are examples of concrete nouns. Let us take another example. In the sentence, the teacher opened the windows. The words teacher and windows can be perceived through our five senses. That means we can see the teacher and windows, we can hear them, we can touch them and also we can sense or feel them. So the words teacher and windows are examples of concrete nouns. The opposite of concrete nouns is abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are intangible ideas that can't be perceived with the five senses such as social concepts, political theories and character traits. Take a look at this example. Honesty is the best policy. In this sentence, the word honesty is a noun because it is a name of a trait. But we cannot perceive it through our five senses. That means we cannot touch, smell, taste, see or hear honesty. So the word honesty is an example of abstract noun. Let us see another example. In the sentence, you should not misuse the freedom you are given. The word freedom is a noun but we cannot perceive it through our five senses. That means we cannot see, hear, touch, taste or smell it. So the word freedom is an example of abstract noun. Now let us learn about the second type of noun classification. In the second type of classification, nouns can be divided into proper nouns and common nouns. Proper nouns are the words used to name specific items rather than general items and they always begin with a capital letter. Take a look at this sentence. My name is Sai. In this sentence, the word Sai is a noun because it is a naming word. Moreover, Sai is a name of a particular or a specific person. That is why Sai is an example of a proper noun. Observe that I have used a capital S for Sai because it is a proper noun. Let us take another example. In the sentence, Mumbai is a crowded place to live. The word Mumbai is a noun because it is a naming word. Also, Mumbai is a name of a specific or a particular city. So Mumbai is an example of a proper noun. Observe that I have used capital M for Mumbai 
because it is a proper noun so remember that all proper nouns should start with a capital letter let us take another example in the sentence mango is my favorite fruit the word mango seems to be a proper noun as it is a name of a specific fruit most people make a mistake here words like mango potato seem like proper nouns but they are common nouns unless a specific variety is mentioned like alfonso mango russian potato etc so you have to keep that in mind now let us learn about common nouns common nouns are the words used to name general items rather than specific items this means that unlike proper nouns they are not used to identify specific people places or objects also unlike the proper nouns they are not capitalized unless they appear in the beginning of a sentence let us see some examples in the sentence i bought a pen yesterday the word pen is a noun as it is a naming word moreover pen is a general word it can be any pen like fountain pen ink pen etc so pen is an example of common noun in the next sentence i am going to the office the word office is a general word because it can be any office like post office recruitment office etc so office is an example of common noun let us take another example in the sentence the car is out of fuel the word fuel is a general word because it can be any fuel like petrol diesel etc so fuel is an example of a common noun now let us learn about the third noun classification nouns can also be divided into countable and uncountable nouns the countable nouns are those nouns that can be counted for example in the sentence priya brought two pencils for the exam the word pencils is an example of countable noun as we can count the number of pencils here there are few things that you have to note countable nouns have both a singular form as well as a plural form they can be used with numbers or the indefinite articles a or an observe how pencils is a plural form with an s added at the end also we have used a number 2 in front of pencils let us take another example my mother asked me to buy a dozen eggs in this sentence you can count the number of eggs in this case it is a dozen so eggs are countable nouns again observe that eggs is a plural form with s added at the end also we have used a number dozen which means 12 in front of x now let us learn about uncountable nouns the uncountable nouns are those nouns that cannot be counted for example in the sentence i have a lot of homework to do i cannot measure the amount of homework similarly in the sentence i want to hear some music i cannot measure the amount of music so music is an example of uncountable noun now in these two sentences you have to remember few things uncountable nouns do not have a plural form and they cannot be used with a number they are usually used with a word some or a lot of so we cannot say that i have a lot of homeworks to do or i want to hear some music no people usually make these kinds of mistakes in day to day conversations so please remember that we cannot use plural form for uncountable nouns there is another set of nouns collective and compound nouns a collective noun is a noun that functions as a singular noun while referring to a group of people or things that means we are talking about multiple persons animals or things but all of them refer to one single unit 
let us see some examples of collective nouns that are commonly used when there is a group of sheep we say a flock of sheep similarly when we have group of bees or elephants we say a swarm of bees a herd of elephants we also have collective nouns for group of people you may have seen a group of musicians playing instruments together so if i have to refer to all of them together i'll call them a band of musicians similarly a board of directors a crew of sailors a company of actors are all examples for collective nouns for group of people okay now let us see what compound nouns are a compound noun is a noun made up of two or more existing words combined into one like smartphone football lunch time etc compound nouns have three different forms open or spaced compound noun in which there is a space between words for example bus stop hyphenated compound nouns in which there is a hyphen between words for example mother in law closed or solid compound nouns in which there is no space or hyphen between words for example football in the next classification nouns can be divided into singular and plural nouns a singular noun names one person place animal thing or idea take a look at these examples there is a little boy in front of our house that is my daughter i found a wounded sparrow in the bush in all of these sentences single unit of nouns are mentioned so words like boy daughter and sparrow are all singular nouns a plural noun names more than one person place animal thing or idea nouns are made plural by adding an s es ies or ves to the existing root word the correct spelling of plurals usually depend on what letter the singular noun ends in most of the singular nouns just need an s added at the end to make them plural for example cat will become cats teacher will become teachers orange will become oranges pen will become pens for some nouns that already end with hissing sounds you may need to add es to the end to make their plural forms for example words like bus dress dish bench tax need an es to be added at the end to make them plural bus will become buses dress will become dresses dish will become dishes bench will become benches tax will become taxes some nouns remain the same in both the singular as well as plural forms and some others have totally different spelling the detailed rules to change singular to plural are given in the material below please go through them before answering the quiz because you don't want to make any silly grammatical mistakes while speaking or writing okay now let us learn about the gender nouns the noun gender tells us about the gender of the noun they can be of four types masculine gender feminine gender common gender and neutral gender a noun is said to be the masculine gender if it refers to a male character or member of a species like boy man king tiger etc a noun is said to be in the feminine gender if it refers to a female member of a species like girl wife cow empress etc a noun is said to be in common gender if it refers to a member of species which can be both a male or a female for example child friend student teacher etc a noun is said to be in neutral gender 
if it refers to a member of species which is neither a male nor a female some examples are mountain book table spoon chair etc okay so that brings an end to the topic nouns and types of nouns let us quickly revise what we have learned in this lesson first of all we understood what nouns are and how to identify them then we learned about the different types of nouns like concrete and abstract nouns common and proper nouns countable and uncountable nouns collective and compound nouns singular and plural nouns and then we learned about the four types of gender nouns understanding nouns is crucial for english language learners as they form the foundation of sentence structure nouns are the building blocks of sentences and without them it would be impossible to communicate effectively in english to help you strengthen your understanding of nouns i have given a practice exercise i will show you five sentences identify the type of nouns mentioned in the brackets here are your sentences pause the video here and try to identify the types of nouns in the sentences provided you can get the answers for these in the material provided below i hope that this lesson has helped you in understanding how to identify nouns in english sentences after watching this lesson you can go through the material given below i have included some important pointers that you have to follow to avoid making any mistakes regarding nouns after going through the material test your understanding of the concept through a quiz given there in the next lesson you will learn about pronouns and different types of pronouns so i'll see you in the next lesson thank you and happy learning